Hey, what's going on there, YouTube? It's Jay here, and uh, today I wanted to make a video showing you the differences and also how to upgrade the memory in your MacBook Pro. Now, a uh, quick aside here, this will only work in the 2012 or earlier uh, non-retina display models. That being said, it's 2015 now, my computer's a few years old, we've upgraded to Yosemite, and uh, since we have, I've definitely noticed some lag issues. I've been getting the beach ball of death a lot. And uh, I just wanted to max out the RAM. It's actually come down in price. I was able to find a crucial uh, 16 gigabytes of RAM on Amazon for less than $120. So that's a great deal. And um, if it's something that you are looking forward to doing, I would definitely recommend it. So here we're going to look at some benchmark tests without the new RAM with the stock four gigabytes of RAM put into the machine. So now what we're going to do is uh, we're going to do a couple of um, tests where we're going to open up a lot of different apps at the same time and we'll see how long it takes. So I'll start with the first keystroke that I have that I make as far as which app I'm going to open and then we'll go from there. Okay, I'll start with iMovie and then we'll work our way down. iTunes We'll open up QuickTime, we'll open up iPhoto, Microsoft Word, uh, we'll open up Chrome, the App Store, okay. But as you can see, there's still no, there's still nothing open for iMovie. So we're at 410 almost, and uh, we still have nothing for iMovie. It's just not opening. Okay. So at this point, I'm going to stop um, wasting your guys' time, and you can realize how bad the Mac. Oh, oh there's iMovie. Hey, only took four minutes and 22 seconds for iMovie to actually, and it's still not open. But we'll stop the timer there, and you'll you can see how how bad our our lag is here. We have a pretty straight beach ball of death for at least the last thirty seconds as iMovie is loading, and uh, you can see by that benchmark test that the computer is pretty damn slow when you try to open up multiple apps at the same time. Hey there, guys! One more quick thing. I just wanted to show you guys something before we install the new RAM. Okay, if you see up here, I'm, I'm going up into the corner to click on the Apple logo. Sorry about focus issues, but you go down to About This Mac, <laughs> OS X Yosemite, you go to Memory, and there you go. There are two ports in the back side of the computer. Each of them stock-wise comes with two gigabytes of RAM for four gigabytes total. What we're going to be doing is we're going to be upping that to eight each for a total of 16 gigabytes of RAM. So we're basically going to be quadrupling the RAM on this machine, and then we'll see what it does. I can't wait. Okay, so uh, just now, I mean like literally in the last two minutes, the uh, mailman delivered my crucial memory for the uh, MacBook Pro, and there it is, crucial memory. All right, crucial 16 gigabyte kit, 8 gigabyte by 2, DDR3, DDR3L, 1600 megahertz, and uh, this is basically what we need. So we do have the uh, Mac memory to upgrade. Now, if you look over to the right, you can see, sorry, having some, for some reason, having some uh, issues with focus but if you look over to the right there you can see I actually bought this at Lowe's yesterday it's a cobalt set for uh, precision screw driving I already have the Phillips double zero installed here but as you can see this thing pops out and then this opens up so you can get to all of the different things it has um, double-sided it has the star keys it has uh, all kinds of different things basically everything that you could possibly need 
And as you can see, I did set a towel up here um, so that the uh, area, I wouldn't have any problems with the uh, MacBook getting damaged or anything like that. So we're going to open it open her up. Okay. I'm going to uh, take these screws out. These screws up here, these three right here are a little bit different than the rest. Okay. These screws here all around, there's uh, 10 screws in all, but these back three right here are, uh, they are longer screws. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the screws out and we're just going to set them up around the outside of the MacBook Pro. And I'll uh, fast forward this for you guys. So you don't have to sit here and watch. Before I do that, though, I just want to make one more quick thing. Make sure that you have the right tool for the right job because these are very small aluminum screws and it is very, very easy to strip the screws if the seating is not in there properly. Stripping these screws, obviously, is a bad thing. Um, you have to get more. <laughs> so, you know, you definitely don't want to do that. So just to let you guys know the difference between the two screws, this is the real small one, and then you have this longer one where the uh, the machining is down further in, so I'm assuming that's to get around something. Another thing I found about this towel setup that I have is that it's kind of a no-roll situation, so all of the screws just kind of sit on the towel exactly where they're supposed to be. So once you have the screws out, the top very, very easily lifts away, okay? And I've never opened this up before, so um, it's a little bit dusty, and uh, I might get some of the dust out of there. But otherwise, it looks like it's in pretty good shape. Here we have the hard drive. There we have the optical super drive. The RAM is right here, okay? It's very, very easy to, uh, to get to. This is one of those things that um, Apple actually makes it very easy to get to that RAM, okay? So we have stickers on top of the, the crucial RAM, as you can see, okay? Now, one of the things that Apple does say is you really want to make sure you keep touching metal surfaces because if there's any kind of static electricity on you, you can definitely uh, fry your RAM, so you don't want to do that, okay? So here we have um, the old ones, and you see how the uh, sticker is going to face up and then that part is going to face down, okay? So there are two little pieces here that you're going to push out and the RAM should pop right up. And there we go. Very easy to come out. And then there's another one at the bottom. RAM pops up. Okay, so it's out. Um, sorry, I put the old ones back in here. Um, it was kind of some trouble. So I actually grabbed this plastic, uh, soft plastic um, chopstick that we have uh, just because this side was getting stuck a little bit in there. And there's a little tab here for the battery. That makes it a little bit difficult for it to uh, to slide out, okay? So sliding these in hopefully will not be as hard, okay? So what you want to do is you want to make sure you put the bottom one in first, okay? And they will snap in, okay? Second one right up there, okay? So now we have both modules in, and they look nice, well seated. All right. Let me make sure that that pops back up. Okay. All right. So we have it all in. So now what we'll do is we will pop the back back on the machine, and then we'll fire it up, and we'll see what we got. All right. So it is coming up. As you can see, computer looks okay. <laughs> so I'm assuming that the RAM is uh, taking here. Looks like it's pretty much started up at this point. Some things are still kind of booting. But let's open up um, the About This Mac feature here. Okay, so let's check our memory. And there we go. 16 gigabytes installed, two memory slots, each of which except the blah, blah, blah. Um, <laughs> we got two 8 gigabyte modules there. So that all looks very good. And for some reason, Google Chrome is opening up on its own, but I don't want it to do that at this point. Okay, so now that we have the 16 gigabytes in, I'm going to give it another couple of seconds, and then we're going to do a couple of speed tests here. All right, so yesterday, as I told you guys, um, we started iMovie up, 
with the, with the uh, four gigabytes of RAM that were originally installed on this MacBook. And it took about a minute and a half to open up iMovie completely to a bootable, to a usable state, basically, where you hit the button, it opens up, and you can start using iMovie, you know, moving things around and actually using the operation. Um, it took about a minute and a half. So what we're gonna do is we are going to try that again. Okay, and I'm gonna hit these both simultaneously. One, two, three, and let's see what we got now. Wow, so iMovie definitely came up a lot quicker than it was coming up uh, before. It's like usually what it does is it'll bounce for about 30 seconds, then it'll stop bouncing, and then this window actually takes about a minute to come up completely. Then it takes another 25 to 30 seconds for it to become usable. So right now what it's doing is it's loading all the content, okay? And now we are pretty much at a bootable, at a usable state. So as you can see, that took about 30 seconds. I, I lagged on hitting the button there. But that took about 30 seconds. So we just shaved a minute off of the startup time of, of iMovie from what it was before. That is a, a, an extreme difference uh, to me. So that's I'm pretty happy about that. Definitely. If you really want to go to the point where you want this machine to be really fast, like as fast as some of these machines that are out today uh, with the solid state drives, it's I, I would recommend upgrading to that. I'm not quite ready for that, mainly because it's a lot of you know transferring files. I don't have a time machine here, so it's hard for me to tr transfer all the files that I have on the hard drive currently onto a new one. I know there's ways, and I know it's probably a lot easier than I think it is, but you know, again. Uh, I'm not quite ready for that, but I know that that will really supercharge the um, the MacBook a good amount. So far, I gotta say, so good. So, hope this video helped and got you over some of the fears of upgrading. And uh, definitely, if you have any more questions, just hit me up in the comments, like, and subscribe, and thanks for watching.